Hi everyone, welcome to IGCC Study Buddy, where you can revise chemistry topics from the Cambridge IGCC syllabus. If you are enjoying our videos so far, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. In this video, you are going to learn the final part, part 4 of topic 2, Atoms, Elements and Compounds. The first area will be simple molecules and covalent bonds. A covalent bond is formed when a pair of electrons is shared between two atoms leading to noble gas electronic configurations. Covalent bonds are formed between two or more non-metals. We previously learned about ionic bonding and this is not the same as covalent bonding because ionic bonding involves the transfer of electrons and the formation of ions while covalent bonding involves the sharing of electrons to create molecules. Ionic compounds tend to be composed of metals and non-metals, while covalent compounds are typically formed between non-metal elements. Let's first learn the formation of covalent bonds in simple molecules. When two or more atoms share electrons through covalent bonds, they are referred to as molecules. Keep in mind that atoms can form bonds in different ways. Single bonds involve the sharing of a single pair of electrons. Double bonds, two pairs of electrons are shared. And triple bonds, involve the sharing of three pairs of electrons. Here are some examples of covalent bonds in simple molecules. Hydrogen or H2. Each hydrogen atom has one electron in its outer shell. In a hydrogen covalent bond, Two hydrogen atoms share electrons to form a stable molecule H2. This sharing creates a single covalent bond that holds them together. Chlorine has seven electrons in its third outermost shell. To achieve a full outer shell with eight electrons, Two chlorine atoms share electrons to form a stable molecule Cl2, creating a single covalent bond that holds them together. In water or H2O, each hydrogen atom shares an electron with the oxygen atom. This sharing results in the formation of two covalent bonds between hydrogen and oxygen holding the water molecule together. In methane or CH4, four hydrogen atoms share their electrons with a carbon atom. This sharing creates four covalent bonds between hydrogen and carbon, forming a stable methane molecule. This is how a covalent bond forms in ammonia. And this is hydrogen chloride. This is how covalent bonding occurs in methanol. In the case of covalent bonding in ethene, what's different is the presence of a double bond. This double bond means that two pairs of electrons are shared between the two carbon atoms involved in the bond. Oxygen or O2 also forms a double bond. Here's the covalent bonding in carbon dioxide or CO2. 
In the case of nitrogen, a triple bond forms when two nitrogen atoms share three pairs of electrons. This sharing results in a stable N2 molecule held together by a triple covalent bond. Now let's describe the properties of simple molecular compounds. Simple molecular compounds have low melting and boiling points because they are held together by weak forces between molecules or intermolecular forces. These weak forces make it easy to separate the molecules requiring little energy to melt or boil. As a result, many simple molecular compounds are gases or liquids at room temperature. Poor electrical conductivity These compounds typically do not conduct electricity because their molecules are electrically neutral and there are no free-moving electrons or ions available to conduct electricity. Therefore, simple molecular compounds do not conduct electricity in either their solid or liquid states. They are typically electrical insulators. In the case of hydrogen chloride, hydrogen has a full stable outer shell with two electrons in its first shell and chlorine has eight electrons in its outermost shell so there are no free electrons to conduct electricity. Now let's learn about giant covalent structures. All the covalent molecules we discussed earlier are simple molecules because they involve a small number of atoms bonded to one another. They are attracted through weaker intermolecular forces. On the other hand, giant covalent structures are made of millions of atoms linked by strong intramolecular forces. It means a vast number of non-metal atoms are powerfully bonded together by covalent bonds. Diamond and graphite are giant covalent structures both made of only carbon atoms. However, their different structures and bonding makes them have different physical properties. Let's learn about diamond first. Diamond's carbon atoms form a tetrahedral network with each carbon atom forming very strong covalent bonds with four neighboring carbon atoms. In diamonds, there are no intermolecular forces between molecules. Diamond is extremely hard, making it ideal for use in cutting tools. It doesn't conduct electricity because there are no free electrons to carry a charge. Graphite consists of layers of hexagonal rings of carbon atoms where each carbon atom forms three strong covalent bonds with adjacent atoms. Graphite has a slippery, layered structure due to weak intermolecular forces between layers. It's an excellent lubricant and can conduct electricity because of the delocalized electrons within the layers. So graphite, when used as an electrode, is like a conductor that lets electricity flow into or out of a substance. It's often used in batteries and various chemical processes because it conducts electricity well. Graphite, when used as a lubricant, acts as a slippery layer between moving parts. It reduces friction and helps things like machinery or locks work smoothly. Now let's take a look at the giant covalent structure of silicon dioxide or SiO2. 
silicon dioxide forms a giant covalent structure with each silicon atom bonding to four oxygen atoms and each oxygen atom bonding to two silicon atoms. Silicon dioxide has a structure similar to diamond with interconnected tetrahedral shapes. Let's describe the similarity in properties between diamond and silicon dioxide. Both diamond and silicon dioxide share properties such as high hardness, high melting and boiling points, and non-conductivity due to their similar giant covalent structures. Finally, we will learn about metallic bonding. Metal atoms lose their outer electrons to become positive ions. For example, magnesium atoms lose their outer electrons to become positively charged ions and these ions are held together by the attraction to the sea of free electrons. These lost electrons, known as free electrons, roam freely among the positive ions in the metallic lattice, creating powerful metallic bonds due to their attraction. This combination of positive ions and free electrons forms a strong bond that holds metals together. So, metallic bonding is the electrostatic attraction between the positive ions in a giant metallic lattice and a sea of delocalized electrons. What are the properties of metals? Metals have good electrical conductivity. Because of the sea of free electrons, metals can easily carry electrical current. These free electrons can move throughout the metal lattice and act as conductors of electricity. Malleability and ductility Metals are malleable which means they can be easily shaped or flattened and ductile meaning they can be stretched into thin wires. This is due to the ability of metal ions to slide past each other while the metallic bond remains intact. That concludes Topic 2 Atoms, Elements and Compounds. Are you enjoying our videos? Are they helping you? Here's a way you can show your appreciation and support our continued efforts. You may use YouTube Super Thanks to send us thanks. Thank you. Hope this video helped you. Please share your thoughts and suggestions in the comment section. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to IGCSE Study Buddy for more revision videos. Bye!